Now I'm super excited about these lenses. These are the Sniper Autofocus Lenses by Suray. Now, they just brought out the, the Nightwalker series, which are cinema lenses. These ones are pretty much identical, but they are autofocus at an f1.2. We've got the 23 that you're looking through right now with the FX30. They've got the 33 and the 56 f1.2. Now, these are really interesting. There's a couple of caveats that we do need to talk about. Uh, we've got a lot to get through, but I do want to see the differences between the Nightwalker series and the Sniper series, so let's get into it. What's going on, my 101,000 amazing amazing friends. I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the Sniper series, which is the autofocus lenses, brand new by Suray. If they're worth it, what are the differences between the Nightwalker series and the Sniper series? Obviously, manual focus cine lens, autofocus, can they be used for video? Are they really good for photos? What is it like wide open? Are there any differences between the optics of these? We've got a lot to get through. So first of all, let's talk about the build quality differences between these two lenses. And obviously we'll talk about the image quality. So the Sniper series comes in the 23, 33, and 56 millimeter focal lengths, which is very similar to a 35, 50, and 85 millimeter full frame equivalent. They have a super fast aperture of an f1.2 and can be stopped down to an f16. All three have a front filter thread of 56 millimeters. They have an 11 blade aperture diaphragm. They come in black, white, and silver bodies, and they weigh slightly different depending on the mount that you get, but in Sony mount, they are 381 grams, 400 grams, and 422 grams respectively. And they are currently for Sony E-mount, Fuji X, and Nikon Z-mount. Now at the time of recording this video, these lenses are at $299 each. Or you can get the three pack for $849 US. Now the Nightwalker series comes in the 24, 35, and 55 millimeter focal lengths. They also have a super fast aperture of T1.2, a slightly larger front filter thread of 67 millimeters, have a 12 blade aperture diaphragm. They come in only black and metal gray, and they weigh 505 grams, 513 grams, and 555 grams respectively. And they cover Sony E-mount, Fuji X, Canon RF, and Micro Four Thirds mounts. So because the Nightwalker series are a little bit older and currently out to the public, they come in at 349 US, or you can get the three set for 999 US. So this is the Sniper series at 23 mils at f1.2. We go into the center and it's actually quite sharp, not bad performance, but we do go out to the corners and it is a little bit soft. And if we do stop it down to f1.6 or even f1.8, it obviously does get a little bit sharper, more contrast. And at 2.8, it does sharpen up quite a lot. And also we have a look at the distortion and it seems to be barrel distortion when it comes to the 23 millimeters. Now we go over to the 33 millimeters, not really any distortion here, but we do go into the center and it is relatively soft and if we do even stop it down to f1.6 or f1.8 even f2.8 it's not exactly the sharpest of lenses but still really decent performance but what i did find this is the interesting thing this is a little bit of field curvature it wasn't exactly sharp in the center and when you sort of go out from the center it actually looked sharper than what it did in the center which leads me to think this is a little bit of field curvature i haven't really noticed it with the ninth series 35 mil lens but with this 33 did actually notice it. It's not crazy different. Like it doesn't look incredibly soft in the center, but if you are pixel peeping, I did notice that difference. But uh, let's look at the 56 mil lens as well. And we do go over to the 56 millimeters and this is where things get a little bit different. It's very ghostly at f1.2. Even if you do stop it down to f1.4, f1.6, it's still quite soft and it does lack a little bit of contrast. It's when you go to about f2.8 is when the sharpness is pretty decent. They do hit a little bit of peak sharpness at about f5.6. And also there does seem to be a little bit of pin cushioning when it comes to this 56 mil lens. Now look, when it comes to looking at these lenses on the chart, they're not optically perfect. And uh, obviously the price is really cheap and they're really nice autofocus lenses. But when it comes to video, majority of the time, you're not actually looking for optically perfect lenses. You might actually want lenses with some nice character. And when we actually look at the video uh, performance, autofocus and some of the images from this, it actually looks really, really nice. And we do have to take all this into consideration as well. But what you also may have noticed and was very similar with the Nightwalker series lenses is that the 23 millimeters actually comes out warmer 
than the 33 and the 56. The 33 and the 56 have like a really nice sort of standard tone, whereas the 23 does come warmer. And you do actually have to take that into consideration because if you are someone that locks the white balance like me, have it at 5600 Kelvin, and you swap between the 23 and 33, you're going to have different colors because the coating or whatever is happening with the image in that lens is going to be different. So you just obviously have to know about these things. And it was the same with the Nightwalker series lenses as well. So if you did watch my Nightwalker series, you will realize that these are actually really good when it comes to focus breathing. And uh, are they going to be the same with the autofocus lenses? Because the optics are slightly different in terms of positioning. What's the focus breathing like? Now this is the focus breathing of the 23 millimeters and you can pretty much see there is no focus breathing. If we move on to the 33 millimeters and it's very similar, the focus breathing is very minimal. When we get to 56 millimeters, the focus breathing is minimal here as well. But the interesting thing is you can see this slight focus hunt before it locks on. So this is touch to focus on the FX30. And obviously this is with the transition speed up to level five. So it's five out of seven. So if you do actually dial it back to about two or three with the transition speed, it does fix this a little bit and uh, you don't actually get that slight focus hunt before it locks on. So you do actually have to be aware of that. And this will actually vary from camera to camera because it really depends on which camera you have and does it have the latest autofocus systems. Now that is the perfect segue to obviously our next test and that comes down to autofocus and focus tracking with the FX30. Now it really does depend on like I said before what camera you actually have. Is it a new camera? Does it have the best and latest autofocus? And obviously what camera system you know are you with Fuji X, Sony E, Nikon Z mount? So the three camera systems may actually respond differently to these lenses. Now, they did actually send me a firmware update, which I did update to the latest firmware right now, but this is still pre-production as well. So you do have to take that into massive consideration because firmware updates can change the way that these focus. But when it came to my testing, if you are at, let's say F1.8, the focus is actually fairly decent. But if you are wide open at F1.2, which I never really recommend to film F1.2 all the time, there are some certain circumstances where it just feels like it doesn't even know what to focus on and it kind of gets choked up. You kind of have to turn the camera off and on. And yeah, it is a little bit confusing sometimes, but that is wide open at f1.2. And now I did use this a lot because I wanted to test what it was like at wide open f1.2 and really, you know, stress test the autofocus. But I am still pretty happy with the autofocus. It's pretty decent, but it really, like I said, depends on the camera, but also the settings, you know, how responsive it is, the transition speed, all those kind of things make a massive difference when it comes to autofocus. Now also this image of my daughter brings up the next category and that is chromatic aberration and longitudinal chromatic aberration as well. And as you can see here, wide open at f1.2, it does suffer from chromatic aberration quite hectically. Uh, we will have a look at the 2333 and 56, but uh, yeah, the results are not amazing for this lens. It's not super clean, but some could say this adds character. So when we look at this type of chromatic aberration, you can see wide open at f1.2 all the way through to even f2.8 at 23 millimeters, you still have some longitudinal chromatic aberrations. And even if we go to the 33 mils, it seems to be pretty much the same story. It's only with the 56 millers where the chromatic aberration isn't as bad, but the lens is noticeably softer. So they're not exactly the most perfect of lenses. But what about filming wide open with the ESO f1.2 and the flaring? So flaring on these lenses actually vary quite a lot. With the 23mm, you don't actually get too many flaring artifacts. It doesn't ghost too much, so it does hold the contrast quite well. And if we go to the 33mm, it doesn't flare as much, but you can still see some quite uh, distracting flaring artifacts. It really depends on if you like that. But when it comes to the 56mm, this is the one that flares the most. You've got uh, quite a lot of ghosting, but it still holds fairly decent contrast. But just those lens flaring artifacts, to be honest, for me, is very desirable. I really like it. But uh, as like I said before, these definitely are not the most perfect of lenses. 
And at all three focal lengths, if you do stop it down to maybe f2.2 or 2.8, this is when the flaring becomes really nice and clean and obviously the lens is quite sharp at that f2.8 as well. So now overall, when we're talking about the image quality between the Nightwalker and the Sniper series, is they're pretty much optically the same. I do believe, in my opinion, that they're probably the same optics inside here, but obviously you do have an autofocus motor in there, which kind of changes that focal length. And that's why you've got a 55 and a 56, the 23 and a 24, and 33 and a 35. That's why the focal lengths are slightly different because the optics kind of change because of the focus motors. But, you know, optically they are pretty much the same. The biggest reason why you're actually going to be buying the Cine lens is the focus gear rings. And you have that control over your focus. And some people prefer that and obviously not an autofocus lens, but I know there are fabulous autofocus cameras out there like the FX30, the A6700, you know, all those kind of APS-C cameras. But I guess that begs the question is, can you actually just get away with manual focusing with this? And it is focused by wire. It's not as smooth and obviously not as uh, accurate as having a manual focus ring. And you can still get the job done. I mean, it still works pretty decent. It's not 110% linear, but it is really, really good, especially if you do pull nice and slow, you can get relatively repeatable pulls. It's only when you're constantly doing really fast pulls back and forward multiple times is where it starts to creep off and obviously change that focal point, which you will notice right here. And uh, But I can still rely on this, but in my honest opinion, I would prefer obviously manual focusing on a manual lens because you just have 100% control over that focus and you're not sort of relying on that focus by wire. So look, overall, the sniper lenses are not optically perfect. They do have imperfections, but it really comes down to if you actually prefer these imperfections or you find them as imperfections and you don't like that and uh, obviously the job calls for something a little bit sharper that's when you would obviously have to invest slightly different lenses sony lenses or something like that you just have to be aware of what these lenses actually give you at the end of the day and when it comes to the autofocus performance i mean that's going to be fixed in firmware like i said this is pre-production so you cannot trust pre-production firmware when it comes to third-party autofocus lenses they will provide more firmware and and reliability to uh, these lenses when it comes to autofocus performance. So, you know, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to what you actually prefer. Do you like having cine lenses and having full control over your uh, focus or do you need autofocus lenses? Because I know there's a ton of focus, autofocus cameras that are, you know, extremely reliable and are classified as cinema cameras like the FX30. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.